it's an enterprise. And we have a, we just released a pair of jeans that are five hundred seventy five dollars. One of the reasons that they're so expensive is because they are using um, five. Well, there's actually five different guys in Japan actually know how to dye indigo um, in this particular technique. And this particular technique is a it's a dyeing art form. And so the Japanese. Is that what called patina? No, this is called hink dye. So basically, what it's doing is they're, they're fermenting natural indigo, which is a very expensive. Um, plant to harvest and to, to ferment over a year um, is a very unique character to the, the way that the, the indigo is applied to the cotton. And there's only five people in the world that know how to do that that, that style. And so the government's trying to create sort of a demand for it because it, it's like kind of a, you know it would be a lost art form, and you don't want to lose something that's part of your culture. And so having these these things factor into price, like I said, it's not for everybody. And the other thing too is that the, the workers that are producing these garments have been working in these factories for generations. There's mills in Japan that are older than this country. And so having that is another the reason why the price is high. And then it goes into economics where, you know, the Japanese yen has been a lot stronger than the Japan or the US dollar. Um, that's changed recently, so that translates into better prices for our customers. Um, I, my opinion, luxury goods are, it's kind of brainwashed this country almost, like where everybody just sees someone on TV, these people that should not be celebrities wearing these products that and cost a lot want. of money, and they forget what's really important in life. And I'm not saving lives, I sell clothes for a living. But you know, there's I think a lot of that then that's a whole social commentary I might want to get into right now. So <laughs> um, so the name self edge, is it a derivative of self edge, the actual Yes, exactly. So there's two pronunciations um, as far as selvage came from self edge. It just rolls off the tongue as being self edge. Um, having that meaning that it's the uh, end of the fabric on the loom. And shuttle looms are actually where selvage fabric comes from. It's a narrow loom, and it doesn't yield as much denim as um, modern looms nowadays. And it's a more inefficient way to produce fabric, too. So you talked a little bit about like, um, luxury brands and these yogurt products that you don't really think quality is good, so can you talk more about that? Uh, I'm not saying that the quality isn't good. Um, I'm just saying that the, you're, you're paying $1,000 for a pair of jeans that should never have cost $1,000, nor did any cost it. Uh, half of that to, to produce. It probably cost just as much as um, a pair of Levi's that was made in China or India. So it's, it's something that, you know, you're paying for the marketing and you get some cash about to fly out of your pocket right now. Dude. Oh, we're, um, sorry. Can I, can I, can I pass through? Sorry. This is Andrew. He's one of the owners. Hi. Hi, Nice to meet you guys. Hi, nice to meet you. Okay. Oh, Andrew. Hi, Alicia. You are busy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and so I look on the site and I mentioned something about chain stitching. So what exactly is that? Chain stitching, we uh, use a vintage sewing machine from the 60s that specifically is used for hemming. Um, I'll show you what chain stitching, the difference between the stitching, chain stitching and chain stitching. So, chain stitching is we have two interlocking threads um, linked together to basically form a chain. Like, what that does is the chain stitch machine that we use is called a Union Special 43200G. Um, it's no longer in production. Um, what it does is actually it's just specifically for hemming and it creates a very unique um, aging characteristic to the jean. So as the jean starts to age, you'll get a roping effect. Whereas a stitch like this, it's called a top stitch, a single needle top stitch. Um, it doesn't produce a roping effect. Um, it actually is stronger though. It won't unravel on itself. If you pull one one stitch out, it doesn't come all the way out and done. Mm -hmm. Whereas a chain stitch, if you pull one thread out, it's gonna unravel on itself. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And so maybe you might have mentioned a few of this in some of the questions, but what exactly about the particular I 
Um, the best fabric Japanese or the best denim comes out of Japan. They've um, pretty much mastered the art of textile making for the last few hundred years, um, along with you know, the Italians. Um, off the top of my head, but Japanese denim, like, and this goes back to the workers that are producing it, um, there's a tradition in those factories where it's a generational thing where it's passed down from grandfather to father to grandkid and so on and so forth. So there's much, a lot more care and attention to detail um, as far as the fabric is concerned. There's jeans that, you know, are, that cost a thousand dollars they might produce only 80 pairs of them because there's only one person actually producing them. Um, so it's a very labor-intensive process is to uh, try to create that that particular type of fabric. Also, where, where the cotton comes from, where the, the indigo is coming from, how many units are being produced, so stuff like that. But the, the actual quality of the denim um, far exceeds anything else in the world. So being, you know, the manager of the store or whatever, what have you, have you learned anything different about them that you didn't know before working here? Oh, I'm going to tell you how you got an education on not only denim, but just the way that clothes are produced and like the, you know, the history of a lot of these heritage brands are in the store. These brands in the shop are all heritage inspired, vintage inspired brands. Some of them do reproductions. Um, most of them are doing inspired collections where they'll take a, piece, a vintage piece, look at it, this type of stitching, the way it's constructed, certain things like buttons, buttonholes, uh, the actual fabric that they're using, and they'll replicate it to a certain point. And they, they adhere to a very strict uh, principles as far as, you know, if it's cut like that, there's a reason for it to be cut like that. So we're not going to deviate from those principles whatsoever. So we have carry a couple brands that kind of think it's outside the box a little bit, um, but as far as um, these brands are concerned, this is the way that they're made, this is the way that they're continuing to be made. So speaking of brands, what other brands do you have in your store? We have, so our two biggest brands that we have in the shop currently are going to be Ironheart and the Flathead. Um, the three newest brands that we have in the shop are going to be the Stevenson Overall Company, um, the Strike Bowl, and I say Sunsurf, which is a part of an umbrella of mm -hmm. uh, one corporation called Toyo Corporation. They produce several different lines of the offer in the shop. Oh, okay. And so what are your price points? There he is. So for entry level jeans for us in the shop are gonna start at two fifteen and they go upwards to six hundred dollars. Okay. Average shirt in here will be about three hundred dollars. Okay. Do custom in here or? We do not do anything custom. Um, we offer over 63 models of jeans, so we don't feel that we need to customize any jeans. Okay. We do offer repair service and hemming service. Mm -hmm. So if you bring in your jeans um, and they're not purchased in the store from us, it's $25. The repair service, if it's not purchased from us, it's $40. If you did purchase the jeans from us, it's $20 for the life of the jeans. And that covers the thing. It's a flat fee, so okay. it's actually a really good deal. Yeah. And it, it's Something that we, it's a good chunk of business for us because there's other repair uh, places in the city that charge by the inch, mm -hmm. or they won't, they won't accept it unless it's bought from them. Okay. And is it men and women? Because it's mostly masculine. Yeah, no, so most <laughs> of it's men's. Um, we do offer women's jeans, and I can show this here. Okay. And we're one of the only companies, or one of the only stores that offers 316 women's jeans, and it's these three jeans right here. I do three cuts. They do a slim straight, a boot cut, and slim tapered. They use cone mills fabric, which is from North Carolina. Um, it's uh, it's cotton salvage fabric. Um, so what's the 316 exactly? Like? 316 is in reference to um, the Bible passage, not 316. It's a, it's a menswear company that started in the Lower East Side, and they were doing you know graphic tees and you know, just streetwear in the early 2000s and then they kind of branched out from doing that and started doing a menswear collection. They were one of the few streetwear brands as that trend was dying down to kind of emerge into a men's market. They're doing very, very well. They, they, they specialize in making jeans and they okay. really toned in on them. Is it going to be stretched? Yeah, it's 1% stretch in the back. Yeah. yeah. And you need that for women's jeans. Yeah. We did, we have these women's jeans that are actually 
So basically, a, a, uh, if you go to a, a store like ours, uh, or a store in Japan, and they ask, you ask for a pair of women's solid jeans, basically what you're going to get is a man's jean that is scaled down to women's sizing. There's no stretch in the fabric, and for women, you need a little bit of stretch to hug all the curves. And like, you know, there ain't nothing wrong with that. I don't want to see a girl wearing looking like a guy when they're walking out the store. It's not, I mean, it, sometimes it looks good if that's the fit you're looking for, but you don't want to be wearing you know, stilettos and rocking a pair of these. So. Another question. This is very nice. Is this like some form of? It looks like denim to me, even though it's like like cottony. So. So this is actually you're you're right about that. So the reason that it looks like denim is because it's indigo dyed, and this sweatshirt's actually made with um, it's a, a particular type of cotton called Gima cotton. Mm -hmm. And Gima cotton, when you when they're spinning it into yarn, they are actually extracting all the moisture out of the yarn. So what it, that does is when it's being woven in the fabric and they have indigo dye to kind of give it a real nice character over time as you start to wear it. Um, what it does is it actually helps wick moisture away from your body. It's very breathable because since it is knitted. So it's an oxymoron of it being a summer hoodie. Well, I think that's all for my questions. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, I appreciate your time. Yeah, <laughs> my pleasure. I'm glad that we, I got to explore what we do in the shop here. We, uh, we take a lot of pride in what we do here, and we feel that the brands that we have in here best represent this very like, niche clothing um, out of Japan. And everybody that works at the store is very passionate about it, and we, we feel that we, we can explain it to our customers the best that we can.